HIV is one of the world's most persistent epidemics, uh, but getting infected with the virus is not a death sentence. People with HIV can live long and healthy lives. Uh, there are an estimated 1.9 million people living with HIV in Nigeria, with the country having the second largest HIV epidemic in the world and one of the highest rates of new infection in sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria still faces challenges in access to antiretroviral treatment for people living with HIV, meaning that uh, there are still many AIDS-related deaths in Nigeria. Joining me in the studio is the Director General, National Agency for the Control of AIDS, uh, Dr. Gambu Aliu. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Aliu. My pleasure. Good right. Pleasure. Talk to us, what's the situation on the ground as we speak with regards to uh, tackling the issues of uh, HIV and AIDS in the country? Well, as you said, uh, HIV and AIDS are no longer death sentence. And um, mm. control of HIV is different from control of corona and it's also different con from control of um, polio and other diseases simply because HIV doesn't have a cure and it doesn't have a vaccine. So uh, what is possible is to identify people living with HIV AIDS and make sure we keep HIV within them. That is um, the only form of control that is available to the global community at the moment. And what we are doing is trying to identify 95 to 100% of people living with HIV AIDS in the country mm. and making sure we keep HIV within them. How do we do that? Um, we keep HIV by giving them drugs and this drug help to wipe the virus in their blood and uh, the moment the virus cannot be seen in the blood then um, undetectable is equivalent to untransmittable mm. and at the moment, we are in the last mile push for that. As you said, we have an estimated number of 1.9 million mm. people living with HIV AIDS. Mm. Out of that 1.9 million, we have so far identified close to 1.7 million. Close to 1.7? 7 million, mm. yes. So, and so you'd say track. that's the progress been made? That's the progress been made. And this progress, more than half of this 1.7 million were identified or 800,000 to 900,000 out of this 1.7 million were identified in the last three years. Mm. Yes. And the remaining 200,000, uh, don't we think that, uh, that they can pose a challenge or to the rest of the society addressing or there might be some challenge, pose a challenge to the progress being made so far? Right. So this is, this is why we are doing what we are doing right now. Mm. We're pushing for the last mile. We're not um, only stopping or sitting at the facility and waiting for patients to come to us mm. and waiting for people to request for HIV services. No, we are going out into the communities. We are going um, to the population groups that are at m uh, greater risk mm. um, of transmitting HIV and also at greater risk of acquiring HIV um, to make sure um, we talk uh, with them, um, they give us um, permission to offer them tests for HIV mm. and identify those ones that have HIV among them. And those that don't have HIV, um, teach them how to remain HIV negative for the rest of their lives. Help us understand who these groups are that are at greater risk that you mentioned. What's the level of cooperation you're getting from them? Particularly um, the key affected population, and these are people that are men that have sex with men, um, individuals who inject drugs, and um, individuals who um, do sex hawking, uh, sex workers. Uh, so this category of uh, individuals are at increased risk or greater risk mm -hmm. um, of acquiring HIV, and um, we uh, have asked to them through their network, um, through their leadership, their group. And um, we have programs now that are available all over the country. Before we have less than 10 places where um, uh, we offer these services to them, we call them one-stop shops. As I'm uh, talking to now, we have about 100 mm -hmm. all over the country, yeah, where we, offer, where we offer um, uh, these services. 
and um, we 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 working to provide more access mm. you know, to this uh, uh, key affected population simply because they are the drivers of HIV now in the community. General population um, prevalence is very low, and uh, transmission among the general population is also low, except the mother-to-child transmission, mm. uh, which we are working on um, uh, within the next one year. We hope uh, also to turn uh, the whatever around it. Um, to make sure that coverage um, is double from what it is now. Uh, let's also look at the mother-to-child transmission because today is Patient Safety Day and the focus is also on mother and child. Help us understand what the plans uh, in place are to ensure that we address that aspect of mother and child transmission and reduce it to the barest minimum. We, we, we are adopting the same strategy um, we've adopted the last two years. The last two years what we did was we um, move into the community. All right. um, we provide services within the community so people responded. Mm. And um, the same way now we're moving into the community, um, we're looking for pregnant women and um, we're letting a uh, couple to understand one thing, that the unborn child has the right to be protected from HIV. And because of that, it is the responsibility of the mother, it is the responsibility of the dad um, to make sure that the unborn child is protected from HIV. And how do we um, guarantee that? We only guarantee that if the mother knows her HIV status, if the mother is not HIV positive. Mm -hmm. However, if the mother is HIV positive, then um, uh, the mother need to get enrolled. Um, to have access to the antiretroviral drugs so that transmission um, to our unborn baby uh, will be prevented. Now, from our report, there are talks about challenges to accessing retroviral, retroviral uh, drugs. So wh why? why is that? The, uh, you know, there are many uh, um, uh, issues that can contribute to the challenges. One, availability. Mm. Two, it may be available, but uh, in terms of access, uh, may also be a problem. But we, ha we don't have issues with stock now. Availability, we have it all over the country. These drugs are there, uh, the centers where we provide uh, these services, and they are waiting for people to come and take them. And uh, some people also because of lack of information. Mm -hmm. And because of that, here yeah, we are advising the general public, um, whoever is in need of um, HIV services, especially the drugs, um, if there is nowhere to talk to, nobody to talk to, uh, please call our um, line, um, 6222. Uh, somebody will be there uh, to offer these services. Somebody will be there to direct you wherever you are to the nearest center or place where these services are provided. Mm. 6222 is the line to call it's to line access to call. Uh, services that have to do with uh, HIV yes. and uh, AIDS in the country. Okay, before and we wrap up. Free. Okay, and it's still free. Okay, well, before we end uh, the show, we'll definitely, you know, let them know again what uh, those numbers are right. uh, so that those who need to call the line can call the line, especially in understanding that it is toll free. Now, one other aspect is the aspect of uh, collaboration with states. How are we doing with regards to that aspect? How cooperative have states been uh, at ensuring that the work is easier for the, uh, the body as we speak? Yes. Um, this is the next phase we, we, we're working on. And um, the next one year we see us going to so many states and um, talking to the state chief executive um, to understand the need uh, to put um, structures in place for sustainability. Mm. For the last 20 years, uh, we have had support of the United States government. We have had support of the Global Fund um, in terms of providing the services at our facilities. However, these supports are not going to remain with us forever. Absolutely. And um, the moment we are able to identify those individuals that we believe have the virus in them, especially 95 to 100 percent of them, uh, if I can see 1.8 million out of the 1.9 million, mm -hmm. then that um, is clearly an indication that we have, we have, we have attained the level of um, arresting transmission. Mm -hmm. And once you arrest transmission, 
the next most important thing is keeping the 1.8 million on treatment for the rest of their life. And this is the work we're going to do together with the states mm -hmm. to make sure that these services continue and these services are not interrupted um, to figure out ways um, how we can sustain it. Federal government together working with the state, uh, making sure that we secure these drugs and making sure we make these mm -hmm. drugs available um, to the people and on time. Yes. Earlier, you talked about um, the information not getting to certain persons. Right. Uh, they are not, they're not being able to access certain things because they don't have the level of awareness. Right. What is the drive uh, or what is the structure in place, uh, the, or the structure the agency is putting in place now uh, to ensure that information is driven to that level where nobody can say that they do not have access to information, bearing in mind that wherever you are, be it at the rural level, wherever it is, you have access to that information. Right, and um, I can say that um, for the last, uh, let's say, 15 years, um, we have been doing that with the help of you, uh, the media. Um, you've been carrying our messages to the doorstep of people and inside their living rooms, um, but the the problem is with stigma and discrimination, the mm. fear um, that if I go and test for HIV today and um, I turn out to be HIV positive, what will happen to me? Right. And if I'm HIV positive and I go to this facility to take medication and somebody in that facility sees me uh, mm. in the queue um, to take drug for HIV, what will happen to me? So this kind of thinking and fear uh, uh, what have been standing in between us and identifying these people. Um, I can say the last, we have spent the last 20 years trying to identify barely 2 million people um, that are driving this in, in this country. But it has been difficult because of stigma and discrimination. Now the message we're passing to people, it is much, much better to know your status today and to make sure we control the virus in you. We make the virus disappear so that it doesn't disturb you in any way. Mm. It doesn't leave you to affect your loved ones, um, your wife or your spouse or your baby. And at the same time, the outlook, you know, it doesn't make you sick. It doesn't show in your face. Mm. And for stigma and discrimination, there is a law um, that is now been d domesticated virtually in all the states. And this law uh, stipulates um, either fine or jail or a combination of fine and jail, you know, for anybody that stigmatizes and discriminate against HIV um, mm. uh, positive people by virtue of um, their positive status. Um, so the courage is what is now um, the right limiting step. People summoning that courage come in to request for, uh, to know their status. And if the status is not what they expected, the HIV positive, to ask for the services. And mm -hmm. this is the right time to do uh, because these services are free. Um, they are there waiting for people. And before you let the virus bring you to the hospital, when everybody will know, it's better for you to bring the virus to the hospital. So let us know about the virus yeah, and take care of the virus in you before the virus possible. expose you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, you yeah. mentioned domestication of the law. And I'm wondering why it is taking or it took us so long before we decided to domesticate the law. I mean, this is something that would have been a benefit to a lot of persons. Right. But we're just trying to do that now. Yeah, but there are processes involved and different states have mm -hmm. different ways uh, they do business. Um, but it's encouraging um, that, um, you know, we, we are almost everywhere uh, with that. And um, uh, we, we are letting people living with HIV AIDS um, to know that they have a case to make, you know, uh, in the case of um, stigma and discrimination, uh, when mm -hmm. they are discriminated uh, or stigmatized just because of their HIV positive status, they should please call us. Um, the same line or they six should two two two. Yeah, so oh. six two 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 or they should talk to their network network of people living with HIV AIDS. They have a leadership um, in all the states and they have a national leadership. Um, they can route their complaint through uh, that network. We will offer help, mm -hmm. we offer assistance and we will work with working with National Human Rights Commission to make sure yeah to make sure that aspect is taken care of by the commission. But you see the concern uh, a lot of persons have with domestication of laws and all of it, policies being made, is the aspect of implementation. 
right. ensuring that uh, whatever is, you know, the government puts its signatory to, it sees to it that something is done about it. Right. Are you uh, confident that this will be a game changer and that the government will ensure that implementation is not a challenge when this is domesticated? So time will tell. Right. Um, the number of cases we get and uh, the way they are resolved will tell us um, whether you know we we are having issues with implementation, or perhaps probably it's the natural thing that whenever you have cases and they go to court, you know um, it takes this long um, uh, period of time before they are resolved. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they are resolved in favor of the victim. And this is the, the most important thing. We see the things be resolved uh, in favor of the victim and justice uh, is served. And if that is done, uh, we'll be happy and uh, we'll be making those as um, examples hmm. uh, for people to see. And that is the most important, uh, 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 the essence of it. For people to see that if you, if you stigmatize or you discriminate, um, again, somebody living with HIV is just because of his HIV positive HIV status, um, you can be punished. And um, these are the kind of punishment um, that always somebody who does that. But even the general public, you know, it is time um, for everyone to be a stakeholder in helping to keep HIV you know, out of circulation. Mm. And there is no way you can keep HIV out of circulation if you deny somebody who has HIV the ability to know his HIV status. Mm. Also, if you deny somebody who has HIV, you know, access to services that will keep HIV out of circulation. Mm. So you're doing more harm than good. Uh, you, you, you're working for the virus, you're not working for us. Right. Yeah. So uh, are you considering, um, or rather, the question should be, how is the, what's the level of collaboration with perhaps local uh, community communicators, influencers, who will drive this message of ensuring that uh, we at least deal with the issues of stigma? Look at uh, religious leaders, influencers at every level. We've been working with um, traditional institutions and religious leaders, and we also have um, a buddy or an army of volunteers, community volunteers we call them, um, that work with civil society organizations. And that one we have about um, 25,000 individuals all over the country um, that work at the community level um, to make sure that, you know, in terms of awareness, awareness is created. To make sure also in terms of giving assistance or supporting people that require help, especially victims of stigma and discrimination, mm. and uh, those services are provided. Uh, but we are urging people to also help. Uh, if you volunteer today, uh, you know, to take this message, mm. you know, to where you know that the message has not um, reached, uh, that will also be a service that will help us. Mm. Yeah, so, and uh, the greater service we want to help people to do is to know their HIV status. Everyone should strive to know his HIV status, especially people that are at risk, actually, of getting HIV. Mm. So how regularly uh, should persons uh, get to know their status? Because at that time, I know that after six months, you can check, and there are times to these things. Just help us understand it better. It, it, it all depends on the risk. Mm. Um, if somebody is taking risks, um, uh, you know, that is above normal, which means um, somebody knows that, um, you know, he does what he shouldn't be doing mm. and uh, does that frequently, then that individual um, need to give, uh, to take this test in the span of about three months, every three months, yeah, depending right. on the level of risk, especially the um, men who have sex with men, the injection um, drug users, the transgenders, and um, the sex workers, these need to test themselves regularly. And um, you know, one thing is, these days we have tests that individuals can um, um, admi ad administer on, the, on, them, on themselves. And um, we call them self-test, HIV self-test. You can take this test you know, in your room um, with nobody around you. Mm. And it's only 15 minutes that you get to find the result. And the good thing is you may not necessarily use blood. You oh. use saliva. Just yeah. like the COVID test. Just like the COVID test. You use saliva. You, you, you just um, rub your gum, you know, uh, with one side of the, the stick 
uh, rub your upper gum, you know, uh, one side and turn the other side of the stick and rub your lower gum and put it in a solution which is provided and wait for 15 minutes and the result will be out. And that's it. That's it. That's wow. it. You know whether you have HIV or you don't have HIV. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting to mm -hmm. know uh, that it's now that easy. It uh, is. Talk to us, you know, when the pandemic started, all attention turned to COVID-19. COVID mm -hmm. And every other um, epidemic seemed to have, you know, taking a the back stage mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. Talk to us what changed at that period. Uh, because a lot of persons said because of, okay, there was a lockdown, uh, social distancing and every other measures, a mm -hmm. lot of persons were saying they couldn't access one thing or the other when it comes to whatever they were dealing with at the time. Yeah, and it happens also to HIV services. Um, uh, you know, we were down in terms of the numbers. Uh, we test in terms of the numbers we identify on a monthly basis mm. and link them to treatment. Um, but you see, that also turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Because, really? yeah, that further push, pushes us out into the community. Um, we use um, our implementing partners and even network of people living with HIVs to take medications to people and uh, do their refill at their homes because some of these uh, facilities where they take medication were turned to isolation centers for mm. COVID-19. And because of that, for the 18 month, you know, that ended um, December 2020, last year, we identified 350,000 HIV positive people in this country. Nobody has done that globally. Wow. And this, 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 yeah, this was despite COVID-19. Mm. Usually in a year, we identify between 50 to 60 every year. But that 18 month, you know, after the initial lockdown, when, yes. we, yeah, when we were massively out into the community doing what we call integrated services, we're looking for COVID uh, because we're helping the COVID response. Um, at the same time, we're looking for HIV, we're looking for tuberculosis. So this worked and, um, you know, we ended up with the highest harvest that nobody has had that one in the past. And um, globally, nobody has done mm. that within 18 months, identifying 350 thousand people living with HIV is linking them up to treatment. And because of that, um, we are closer to con controlling HIV in Nigeria. Hopefully, before the end of next year, we should control HIV transmission in Nigeria. Hopefully. So what, what are the plans in place, the projections and the plans in place ahead, uh, you know, bringing HIV and AIDS to its barest minimum or controlling HIV and AIDS, let me use your word, as you have said. So, you see... HIV it has two pieces of control. First, you control the epidemic, which means you control transmission. Um, people don't give the disease to others, though the virus to others, and the disease also don't kill people. Right. The next one is you pay pension and gratuity. You continue giving these people medication to swallow for the rest of their life if you want to keep the virus within them, to make sure the virus doesn't leave them to affect other people. Right. And they live their life uh, with the virus, with the virus not harming them, and also the virus not leaving them to affect other people until they die. Mm. Mm. So that's the next phase, and which is um, may not be an easy phase, actually. It's right. going to be a difficult phase, um, but that's why we are putting sustainability structures on ground now. Before we arrive at that stage, where we say we have virtually identified close to 100% of people living with HIV AIDS, what do we do with them now? We keep them on medication, and we keep them on medication for the rest of their life. Who is going to be providing those medication for the rest of their life? Mm. Uh, this is what we are figuring out now. And how are we going to be taking those medication to them, mm. you know, to make sure that those clinics are functioning, those clinics are running, and people are getting their refill every three months if they like, uh, even every six months if they like. Um, uh, the more we get... Uh, more modes of um, uh, administering th this medication um, that is uh, that has flexibility that mm. patient can adapt the better but for now we have these medications that we offer and we can give refill for up to three months for up to six months depending on the patient's ability and um, yeah we keep we keep we keep it at that and they will see where it goes hopefully we probably may get hiv cure right right as it is and all of this is for free medication for free. 
uh, and all of it. The number to call, line to call uh, for HIV and AIDS uh, consultancy or... That is our hotline, hotline national okay. call line. Yeah, national call center is it this it, it located in Naka. All right, six yeah. two 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 is the number. We must thank you, Director General, National Agency for the Control of AIDS, uh, Doctor Gambo Aliu, for your time on the program. My pleasure. Thank you.